Hello everybody and welcome back to my studio, The Pottery Corner, down on the south coast of England near Chichester. I'm Sarah Amos, welcome along everybody. Today we're doing another glazed kiln fire opening, um, mostly students work, although one of the wonky pots from the wonky pot tutorial, which went up a couple of weeks ago, is in the bottom of this kiln, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, the kiln is down to 17 degrees centigrade. It was cold yesterday, that's about ambient temperature at the moment. So I'm gonna flick off the kiln supply. Um, well, you know, I don't even have to say it these days, do I? The sneakiest of sneaky peaks. Um, so we'll get the kiln lid up and see what we've got. Now on the last kiln opening, um, I talked about the two 16 year olds who came and did some throwing with me. So the rest of their pots, so Olympia and Nina, the rest of your pots are in this kiln load. So we'll have a look at those. So let's get started. So this one indeed is Nina's um, and the combination there is Amoco Snow on the inside and Amoco Snapdragon on the outside. Um, Amoco Snapdragon is slightly um, what I would call a silk finish. So it's not a high gloss finish, more of a silk matte finish. Um, but nonetheless, a nice little bowl, nicely done. Uh, well done, Nina. So that's a nice little bowl. Um, I think this one is... Uh, no, actually, this one is Olympia's. So Olympia, this one is yours. So on the outside is Amoco's Cobalt, the Celadon Glaze called Cobalt. Um, and then on the inside, we've got Amoco's Textured Turquoise, Potter's Choice um, Glaze Textured Turquoise. And again, a nice little thrown piece. There was probably quite a lot of glaze on there. I'm sure that you can see right in the bottom of here, we have a little bit of pinholing where the glaze is really thick. Um, so she'll have to watch that she doesn't use that for fluid. Um, this one I think is, um, a, oh no, it's Nina's. Tell a lie, I thought it was Olympia's, but it's not Nina. Gold on the inside and Amoco's Celadon Glaze Sky on the outside. So they're both Celadon Glazes, Marigold and Sky, both by Amoco. So again, a nice little one. This one is Olympia's. Um, this one has a tiny crack in the base where the base was quite thick and it has a very, very slight S crack, but nothing to be worried about. So that's Amoco Snow on the inside, Snapdragon on the outside and Palladium on the rim, which Olympia um, was advised is not food safe. So, I mean, I've said to her, it would be fine for a peanut bowl, um, but not something you're actually going to eat out of. Um, so the um, she made the palladium drip down the sides and actually it's quite effective. I do like the way that palladium crawls on snow. Isn't that pretty? So really nice. And again, it has actually crawled on the Snapdragon on the rim. So another nice piece. And um, Olympia very cleverly did this little um, bee pot, which I think is really cute. So this is um, Amoco Obsidian and Amoco Marigold Striped. And on the inside, <clears throat> it's Amoco Snow. And then she painted this little bee, isn't that gorgeous? Really sweet, just a little freehand glazed bee in the bottom of there, which I, I just thought it was such a simple little couple of brush strokes that she did and really effective. So well done, Olympia. That one's really sweet. Uh, Catherine, this is your platter. So Catherine has been to um, a couple of courses and indeed is coming back to do some tiles at a later date. But this is uh, your platter, which um, I've used uh, the template and made a mould upstairs, which we use in the studio from the video by, um, is it Bill Van Gilder? You'll find it if you look on YouTube. Um, he made some, uh, he actually threw his hump moulds, but I have to say I coiled mine and then trimmed them on the wheel. Uh, but this has been made using the template um, as per his video. And then what we do is we texture the stamp using homemade bisque stamps, and then some of them are bought um, stamps like the fish motif on this one. And this glaze combination is Amoco Storm. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that really beautiful, deep, shiny blue. 
So that's Amoco Storm. And again, like Rainforest, it's an absolutely brilliant glaze, comes out time after time exactly how you want it to be. So a very good glaze. And if, you, if you're starting off and you don't have very many glazes, it's a good one. So that's yours, Catherine. We will take the cookies out, take the shelf out. This isn't going to be terribly long today um, because there's not a huge amount in this kiln. All right, pop that down there. Okay, and get the nasty props out. We don't like those. I always take the props out when I'm unloading a kiln, as you know. I don't want them to fall on somebody's work. There we go, take those out. All right, so this is the last of the 16 year olds. This one is Nina's, just a little pot. And this one is in Amoco's Weeping Plum. And she's left it clay body here. So we used a piece of masking tape to get this lovely crisp line between the glaze and the clay body, um, used a piece of masking tape so that when she had glazed, she could take the masking tape off, leaving her this nice line. What a sweet little thing that is. Lovely pink, that weeping plum. Comes out really good in my kiln. Lovely. So that's the last of those. Uh, Catherine, this is your other... Um, just checking it. Yeah, it's still got a cookie on the bottom. The other of your platters. Um, so this one is using a fish stamp that we have in the studio. And that one has had copper oxide on the fish stamp wiped back so it's gone green where the copper oxide has reacted with the glaze and then um, that's amico's fog over the top and it has little feet on it which you can't actually see um, but i might actually demonstrate you know often i say to you i'm going to knock the cookie off with a hammer well i'm just going to give it a tap and as i say it literally is the smallest tiniest of taps just to knock the cookie off the bottom and I shall have to just be very careful about the shards on this foot. I don't know if you can see where I've knocked the cookie off. The tiny little bit of glaze that was, uh, that was sitting on the cookie has actually made a little shard. So I just need to be careful of that and take it off with a file so that I don't brush my hand across it. So again, another nice platter. Um, and, and that, as I say, is Amoco Fog. Another very good Amoco glaze. Uh, next in here, this is just um, this was just a little demonstrator that I did when I was doing a throwing course. So I've just done that in Amoco fog on the inside, Amoco's downpour on the outside, and I've just used the Ellen transfer. I can't remember what it's called. Is it called Happy Dogs or something like that? Uh, just a little bit of transfer, just to give it a bit of interest. Um, not a terribly exciting thing, but when I'm doing demonstrating, I quite often just make little pots um, as I'm going through showing people how to throw. So I hate putting them back in the reclaim. So I just make them into little pots with something on them to amuse me. Right, Carolyn, this is your latest Sevilla. Um, now I have put this on, as you can see, one of them is still on here. The homemade... Um, cookies that I made using the wire from the elements when I changed my kiln. So when I changed the kiln elements, there's little staples holding the elements in and I've just reused that glass, sorry, that um, wire in these little props because if I'm doing something that's round and needs to just be stood up, that's how I do it. So I have left a little bit of a filing job on the bottom of there but it's really not bad enough to worry about and that way it can be glazed in the round if she had to stand this up in the kiln it doesn't actually stand on its foot because it's round um, so to, to actually be able to glaze it in the round that's why I've put it on the cookies so this is one of Carolyn's spheres as you know Carolyn likes to make round things and it is lovely now I need to try and remember the glaze combination that looks like <clears throat> and may not be uh, blue sapphire on there it might be blue midnight but it looks like blue sapphire to me because it's quite bright blue um, it might be 
something completely different. So maybe Carolyn may put in the comments exactly what that is when you look it up in your book, Carolyn. On the top, we've got um, textured turquoise on there. And then on the top here, on the very, um, the, the, the little knob on the top or the button on the top is palladium. Um, so again, a nice thing. Um, she has a set of round things, so I know that this is going to join the set. And she's made a little round, hollow round coaster, which actually is on the shelf. It hasn't yet been bisque fired. Um, so she's just made a little hollow coaster for it to sit on, a little ring. So I'm sure she'll glaze that in the same colour, um, just so that it doesn't roll around. Pop that back up there safely. So another good piece, Carolyn, well done. Okay, let's pop that there. And the last thing in this kiln is the one of the wonky pots from the wonky pot tutorial. So if you haven't seen the wonky pot tutorial, have a look at that. And this one, um, it's just got a cookie on the bottom. I, I do stand them, as you know, I stand them on cookies. So each of the feet has been on one of these little cookies. Now, these cookies I make myself, um, they are just clay that has been bisque fired. And I use them over and over again. And there is a video on the channel about making your own kiln stilts and cookies. So look that up. But it's a really cheap way of saving your kiln shelves because the kiln shelves are really expensive. And then I just stand the pot on these little cookies so that if there's any glaze at all that's going to move, it doesn't stick to my shelf. So that one, as you can see, there's a tiny, 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 I'm not sure I can get that towards the camera, a tiny bit of glaze just on this foot that has stuck that cookie on there. So I just need to knock that off again with a hammer. This is a mono printed um, wonky pot and the wonky pot template so that you can make your own at home is available in my Etsy shop and it has been selling amazingly well. So thank you to all of my regular viewers who have bought one. Um, I do have more. So um, there'll be a link in the description below to my Etsy shop if you want to go and have a look at the template. So as I say, this one's been done in mono printing. Really pretty. I'm really pleased with that. Beautiful blues with the leaves and everything. Really nice. Um, and the inside glaze is Amoco Sky. Um, I always use the mono print on the bottom. Nobody's going to see it, but I like to use the mono print on the bottom and Sky again on the legs. So he's a nice wonky, really nice. And I like the green um, sort of splashes all over it. A bit Jackson Pollock, just splash it on. Looks really effective. And these leaves have been done with the vinyl stencils um, that my friend Karen has in her Etsy shop. So again, I'll put a link to her Etsy shop in my description below. So lovely, lovely wonky, we like him. Now, this week I've had two messages from my lovely viewers. Uh, this one is from Carolyn Pierce. Uh, last week we unpacked the bird bath and uh, I'm pleased to say that the, uh, the lady who bought it for her sister's 60th was absolutely delighted with it. So it's gone to a very good home. Um, and indeed I have another one to make um, for another um, commission. So I will uh, endeavor to do a series on how to make a bird bath. So, that's um, one of my next tutorials in the pipeline. So Carolyn Pierce, who I think is at Mudworks in Loveland in Colorado, um, has made this beautiful rhubarb leaf sink. So the, the um, bird bath was made with rhubarb leaf. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And um, it is made uh, from a rhubarb leaf, as I say and has been glazed in Coyote's Chino with red gold and really red sponged on. Um, it's a bit thicker slab than she would normally use, obviously, to make it durable. And the hole has been chamfered so that the drain would fit. But I really, really like that. That's an absolutely smashing piece. And what a thing to have in your, in your guest bathroom or somewhere. Something that you've made yourself. It's absolutely lovely, Carolyn. Well done. Um, and uh, the first person, the first person to send me a picture of their finished wonky pots uh, is Helena. Helena Wicktorsen, who comes from, I'm sure I've said that wrong, Helena, I'm sorry, uh, from Sweden. So here 
Ah, oh, Helena's wonky pots. Look at those, aren't they lovely? So really lovely, really nice wonky pots. Great to see those done. It's great to know that you're all out there making your own. So if you're making some from the template, do send me a picture, send it via the website. Have a look in the link below. Um, and she's also made some poppy heads from the poppy head tutorial. And again, aren't those lovely with a nice, nice, I think that's oxide on there with some lovely glazes. So again, beautiful. Well done, Helena. Those are really nice. Um, and as a result of Helena sending me her, her wonky pot, and I know she's not one of my students, but I feel she's one of my students, even though it's on YouTube. Um, I'm going to give you student of the week this week, Helena. So thank you so much for sending me your picture. Much appreciated. Right, so that's your lot for today. I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.